<laughs> when I wake up in the morning, when the sun comes out to shine, I'm feeling fancy, I'm feeling fine, I'm watching the nine at nine. Thank you, Fred. Uh, nine at nine, and number nine, Sarah. All right, so a bacon is delicious. I, I think I'm the wrong person to read this. I actually think I'm the only person in the world who doesn't like bacon, but I'm gonna continue. We found lots of cool gadgets to enhance your bacon experience, like the Bacon Express countertop device. It's a toaster for bacon, and it cooks six strips in minutes, and we love the Back Bay Dining Bacon clothesline. Just hang it out like your laundry and let your family grab and go. Look at that. They've even got new bacon trays designed just for yeah. the grill. You guys ever just, if you do like it, don't you, can't you just put it in the microwave? How about, how about we just do bacon? Like, how, yeah. we don't need, all, there don't need to be bacon accessories. Just give us the bacon. <laughs> That's all we want. We just want the bacon. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to hang your bacon to look cute No, I you really don't. I want it in my stomach <laughs> where it belongs. <laughs> Sounds like a grease fire waiting to happen. Number eight, you don't need a green thumb to start your own little garden this fall. And mini greenhouses, super popular right now. They're all over the Insta, as the kids say. The greenhouses are portable. You can put them anywhere you want in your yard. We found lots of options online. For under 100 bucks, they're designed to hold a few plants or flowers. If you're not into it or you kill all your plants, you can take your tiny greenhouse down and you're not out too much money. Your mileage may vary with the Chicago winter. It's interesting. You are so hip with the kids, Tim. I do try. <laughs> <laughs> On the Insta. Yeah. That's how we roll. Number seven. You know those hundreds of pictures that you probably have on your phone right now? Yes. You might be able to sell them as stock photos. Uh -huh. There are dozens of online platforms that pay royalties for them. It could be a traditional stock photo company, but also sites that print stuff on demand or others that put nice pictures on coffee mugs or decorate phone cases. The sale of one particular photo won't get you a lot of dough, but you can sell the same photo many times if it's actually good. Check out Adobe Stock and Shutterstock. Gotta be careful the way you say that. And also, Fine Art America and Red Bubble. I feel like people just take your photos anyway, so. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to sell any of these. Even if you do, though, what if, I mean, once it's on the stock, it's on there. What if then you see your big face on a billboard for something <laughs> yeah. that you don't want it out there for? You have no legal recourse, I don't believe. Like, once it's there, it's there. If you sell it, that's right. It's right? not yours like, anymore. Yeah. That's right. Number six, the basis for the cure is leaving the band. He says he's fed up with all the betrayal. Well, see, this is their one and only happy song. This makes them, they're really a gloomy band. So this all makes sense. Simon Gallup must be a patient guy. He's been with the band for 40 years. He's 61 now and posted his announcement on Facebook this past weekend. He said, with a slightly heavy heart, I am no longer a member of The Cure. Good luck to them all. The band also announced that their upcoming album might be their last, so really this whole leaving the band thing mm. might just be for show, might perhaps a publicity stunt. It's Great so band, emo, though. man. Yeah, <laughs> right. It is. Throwback, yes. All right, number five, roller coasters have come a long way. Back in the 1890s, there was a coaster at Coney Island in New York called the Flip Flap Railway. <laughs> it was one of the first of its kind to feature a loop-de-loop, -loop, only it was round, not oval, because they didn't know any better. So riders experienced a G-force of 12. So we'll put it this way, fighter pilots typically experience a G-force of seven. Yeah. So lots of people ended up with either severe whiplash or being knocked unconscious. One newspaper called the loop the unholy terror of the beach. Yikes. How did we do this without Marcus? I know, oh, we need yeah. Marcus for this one. Very true. He'd be able to go into the whole history. <laughs> I'm really good on staying off of rickety roller coasters yeah because i want to say I, I heard a, a comedian i wish i could cite it but a comedian say that, that everyone talks about the best thing since sliced bread and the roller coaster in cleveland was actually invented before sliced bread yeah and it's just rickety and just an accident <laughs> waiting to happen oh, nice. sometimes you gotta live dangerously 
That's true. Speaking of number four, let's look back at a great day in history perhaps many Americans aren't even aware of. On Labor Day, 1995, Hulk Hogan opened a restaurant at the Mall of America in Minnesota called Pasta Mania. Hard to figure out how it failed since it seems like when you think of Italian food, of course you think Hulk Hogan. <laughs> but it did, alas, fail less than a year after opening. At the opening, some fellow wrestlers like Macho Man Randy Savage and manager Jimmy Hart were there and they were ahead of the game at Pasta Mania where the rule was you choose the pasta, you choose the sauce and cheese. There was also Hulk shaped pasta that some showed him flexing. Sounds mm -mm good. Oh, that's yes. kind of cute actually. Yeah. I mean, the problem Hulk is shaped just pasta. asking you to eat your vitamins too and <laughs> say your prayers and then rip the t-shirt and that's probably part of the <laughs> pasta. That's right, brother. <laughs> that was good. Was that your impression? That was I, good. I do a lot of dumb yeah. wrestler impersonations. I like it. <laughs> Number three, check out these architectural relics. Remnants left behind after workers destroy a building or structure. Some are doors that no longer open or stairways that lead to nowhere, not heaven. Some of these relics are left behind out of necessity. Some just plain laziness. A Japanese artist calls them Thomasons. It's a reference to a Japanese baseball player in the 80s who's held a useless position on the team. Aww. These days, the images are collected on Instagram. See the gram, there it is, or the Reddit. There's even a Thomason observation center on the Facebook, where you can go look at it at thefacebook.com. <laughs> it's all named after this poor guy who didn't get to play. It's oh, so sad. It's very I sad. couldn't even let him pinch hit once. Yeah. Number two, from time to time, we'll take a real letter to an advice column and see if we can help. This is from Ask Amy. When my sister calls and I miss the call, she expects a quick call back. I do not deliberately ignore her calls, but I don't have my phone glued to my hip. When I see a missed call, but no voicemail or text, I assume that it is nothing important. She feels that I should always call her back when I see a missed call because uh, this is a simple courtesy. Who is correct? Should I return every missed call from her, or should she send a quick message asking me to call her? Hmm. Oh, gosh. I, I do that's feel annoying. the anxiety. That question itself is annoying. <laughs> the anxiety of when someone calls you. Like, there's some anxiety because now we communicate so much with just text messages yeah. that when someone calls you, it feels like something bad happened. Right. But if this person is abusing the power, Larry, I yeah. don't know yeah. if I'm yeah. calling them back. Yeah. The phone is for really important stuff, right. urgent stuff, not just for the heck of it. So, yeah, if she doesn't leave a voicemail, how important can it be? This this sister seems needy. Very She's, needy. Even yeah. just writing the question felt needy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well. They both seem needy yeah. to me. Um, I always do the double call. If I really need you, I'm gonna call back one more time so you know. Ah, the there's... worst is getting the text from someone It's like, can I call you? Because <laughs> <laughs> then you dread the call. I know that text. That's horrible. You're right. Yeah. Oh, we have really right. big we've problems. We've saved we've the been world dealing. once yeah. again. Yes. All right, you guys ready for number one? <laughs> yes. A guy named Matt, who goes by Roman Holiday Online, made a really cool montage videos. Here's one called Title Drops. It's movie characters saying the movie. What? Saying, saying the title of the movie they're in. Yeah. I really butchered that. I'm sorry. Hot tub time machine. 50 50. Angels in the outfield. Oh, I Dust get it. Done. Bend it like Beckham. The rest girls are easy. Peggy Sue got married. Big. Double jeopardy. Double indemnity. Bride of Frankenstein. The third man. Witness for the prosecution. The street car named Desire. Ace in the hole. On the waterfront. Some like it hot. To kill a mockingbird. Somebody up there likes me. The man who shot Liberty Valance. Vertigo. Rear window. Cat on a hot tin roof. Me. And you, and everyone we know. Fantastic, Mr. Fox. The right stuff. Tough guys don't dance. Point break. Vanilla Sky. Full metal jacket. Good <laughs> morning, Vietnam! Oh, no. The Englishman who went up a hill but came down a mountain. Clear and present danger. A bridge to Boy, this could get addicting, I but know. we only have <laughs> an eight-hour show. Just so when that, you think it's over, it keeps going. Yeah, that is the nine at nine. <laughs> I'm watching the nine at nine.